American privilege keeps blurring my vision. Inherited sickness. Ah, yeah. The earliest recorded celebration of New Year's Day dates back to 4,000 years to ancient Babylonians. Unlike the current calendar system, which begins the new year in January, Babylonians celebrated in mid-March on the new moon after the spring equinox, which is the day which has the equal amount of sunlight and darkness. This event was a massive religious festival called Akinu. It spanned 11 days, during which different rituals and ceremonies were conducted. In 46 BC, Julius Caesar introduced a solar-based calendar known as the Julian calendar, and it replaced the flawed Roman lunar calendar that had been used since the 7th century BC. This new calendar introduced the concept of a leap year, and Caesar declared that January 1st was the first day of the year to honor Janus, which was the Roman god beginnings and tradition, and was portrayed with two faces facing in opposite directions. While January 1st is accepted as New Year's Day in Rome, many cultures continue to celebrate New Year's Day on different dates that were significant in their own calendar. Usually this involved agrarian or astronomical events. For example, during the Middle Ages, in Western Europe, New Year's Day was celebrated on March 25th, which was the Feast of Annunciation as the beginning of their year. Gradually, Western countries would move back to January 1st. This shift largely occurred due to the Gregorian calendar's adoption, named after Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced this calendar in 1582. The Gregorian calendar aimed to bring about a shift in Christian celebration of Easter close to the time of year it was observed when the early church was founded. Today, New Year's Day signifies a fresh start and a chance to make changes for the upcoming year. Celebrations are different across cultures, but the common themes are societal gatherings, fireworks, singing, music, parades, and shared meals, as well as a hope for a prosperous and peaceful forthcoming year. However, once again, we have another holiday, which is a double-edged sword for African Americans. Before the Civil War, the first day of the year was often referred to as Hiring Day or Heartbreak Day. These names came about because of the heartbreak of the situation of enslaved people they used to face on the first day of the year. Enslaved individuals were forced to wait and sit in suspense to find out whether or not they were going to be rented out to another family, household, or separated from their own families. This practice of renting them out was alternative to selling a slave in a beneficial way for their white enslavers and hirers to make money. The idea of hiring out an enslaved person was not uncommon in the South. Historian Alexis McCrossin would explain that hiring day was a large economic system. Most of these payments and debts were taken care of on New Year's Day. This activity did take place all year long, but it was especially concentrated to New Year's Day. On this day, contract between buyers and sellers, as well as between the slave and their owners, could start and end. These agreements would often be conducted between friends and family members, businesses, associates, and enslaved people were sometimes exchanged in town squares, courthouse steps, and even on the side of the road. It's important to remember that enslaved people were viewed not as a human being, but as an investment and an asset, and as such, they could be rented, used the collateral, repossessed, and sold. An enslaved person by the name of Lewis Clark would speak about this in 1848, stating that of all the days of the year, the slaves dreaded New Year's Day worst of any. But all of this would change on January 1st, 1863. And this was at a pivotal moment in American history, but most notably for African Americans. This was the day that Abraham Lincoln officially enacted the Emancipation Proclamation. In the summer of 1862, after border states had turned down its offer for compensated emancipation, Lincoln had the realization that the key to winning the Civil War and uniting the country again was directly connected to the issue of slavery. And from that point on, Lincoln decided that dealing with slavery was going to be a crucial part of ending the Civil War. So, in, eight, in September 22, 1862, Lincoln announced the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. The basic idea behind this was that anyone enslaved in states or parts of states which were still rebelling after January 1, 1863 would be set free. There was a catch, however. 
If any Confederate state decided to rejoin the Union before January 1st, their slaves would not be freed. After they drew closer, enslaved people and abolitionists gathered together late at night where they held watch night events, often in churches or homes where they were safe. They kept vigil, praying, and hoping for the time where the proclamation would become official. Watch night is a tradition that has its roots in Christian communities dating back to the 1740s, particularly between groups like the Methodists. It usually involved people staying awake throughout the night, praying and reflecting as they welcomed the new year. However, for African Americans, Watch Night had a deeper significance. As they prayed and sang hymns and read from the Bible, they awaited the break of dawn, which symbolized more than just a brand new day. It was a dawn of freedom that they had eagerly been waiting. This was a spiritual and historical turning point rather than just the start of a new year. It was a very important time few hope for almost 4 million enslaved African Americans. As the years pass, Watch Night evolved to be much more than an annual remembrance of the Emancipation Proclamation and became a central event of African Americans' religious and cultural heritage. Black Americans would use their diverse religious affiliations and congregate in church on New Year's Eve for Watch Night services, and this would commemorate the spiritual gatherings as an opportunity to give thanks reflect on the past year and pray for guidance for the upcoming year. Early watch night services would include singing hymns such as Freedom's Eve, sharing our personal stories, overcoming difficulties, reading from the Emancipation Proclamation, and praying till midnight as church bells rang to welcome in the new year, and it brings in a new spirit of determination. And this represents an unwavering faith and strength that's always been an important part of the African-American community. Food traditions relating to New Year's Eve in the African-American community have also closely tied to their history. During the time of slavery, black-eyed peas and collard greens were often the only foods that enslaved people were allowed to grow and cultivate. So these foods became a part of their New Year's Day traditions. The peas would symbolize coins, and their expansion while cooking represented the growth of wealth. Eating these on New Year's Day is believed to usher in financial success for the new year. The tradition of eating black-eyed peas owes a lot of significance to Vicksburg, Mississippi during the Civil War. In 1863, the town ran out of food while it was under attack, and black-eyed peas became a lifesaver. And from that point on, the lagoon was seen as lucky. On the other hand, collard greens usually symbolized banknotes, hence they were eaten to attract wealth. However, beyond the symbolism, these foods were also nutrient-rich, inexpensive facets of their culinary tradition and ensured sustenance and survival during harsh times. Accompanying these two key items is cornbread, which also adds the aesthetic and symbolism of a prosperous new year ahead. The golden color embodies the vibrance of gold as a universal symbol of wealth. Cornbread's history also points to its resilience and adaptation, as corn was one of the crops that was introduced to enslaved people. Interestingly enough, the culinary traditions of black-eyed peas, greens, and cornbread has spread beyond the African-American community and has been widely accepted across all Southern households. These dishes highlight the dynamic, evolving nature of African-American cuisine being adopted by the broader American culture. From Heartbreak Day to Watch Night till today, the, the traditional practices of the black community has widened considerably. The black community nationwide have adopted more universal traditions alongside their unique cultural practices. For instance, the idea of first footing, which is the first person to enter a household on New Year's Day, is seen as a bringer of good luck for the new year. That dates back to Northern England during the 8th and 9th century. Or making New Year's resolution, which is the universal practice of making a resolution for personal growth and self-improvement. That idea dates back to the earliest celebrations of New Year's Day and the Babylonians. Both of these have significant acceptance within black communities and both melded together with African American traditions, making New Year's celebrations a true melting pot of old and new. New Year's Day isn't just about a countdown to midnight or making New Year's resolutions. It's the embodiment of spirit, 
hope and determination that's being passed down through generations. Nowadays, these watch night services are a time for praise and to honor one's history, and New Year's Day provides an opportunity to reflect on the past and promote positivity for one's future.